Just into news for Jax, we got word that the Gateway Mall and the mobile vaccination site that was supposed to be at Lutheran Social Services will not be administering the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. If you've not heard yet, apparently there are six women who developed a rare blood disease that resulted in blood clots after being administered this, uh, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Going to bring epidemiologist Dr. Jonathan Cantor from the Penn Center for Epidemiology into the fold. Dr. Cantor, we heard about a problem with blood clots with AstraZeneca, which is not available here in the United States. Now we're hearing about it with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. I know that the CDC has called an emergency meeting for tomorrow, and both the FDA and CDC has asked that all vaccination sites halt immediately the administration of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. They say this problem is extremely rare. What's your take? Well, you know, we're in a very, very precarious, difficult situation here. You know, we had hinged a lot of our hopes on our vaccination strategy on this Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The fact that it's a single dose and the fact that we've got a lot of it available and we've got other companies manufacturing it now. So a lot was hinged on this. You know, we're now seeing some concerning safety signals. The question is going to be, and this is the key question, you know, when you've got so many people getting vaccinated, it is not surprising to get rare events happening. And so that is why they are convening these emergency meetings. It is out of an abundance of caution that they are saying, let's hold off on vaccination for now. But that certainly isn't the same as saying we have decided that it is unsafe or that it is dangerous. And that's why they need to meet. That's why they need to tease out whether these signals that we are seeing are in part a result of surveillance bias or the fact that we are now checking very closely, of course, and we're very aware uh, these people may have developed clots anyway. But the concern is, if it is related to the vaccine, we need to know. And to me, this is a sign that our system is working, that not only do we have a pre-authorization system where we have to do these phase two trials and these phase three trials, but also that we have a surveillance system going on where we are checking on it. So this is exactly what you want to see in terms of the response of the government. This is exactly what you want to see in this situation. Right now, it's just too early to know whether what we are seeing is a safety signal. And the key message, I think, to viewers is that we need to just hold off in terms of our judgment right now. We don't need to decide, hey, this is dangerous. We never want to get this vaccine. We just need to wait and see was this really something of concern or was this simply, you know, the result of the fact that we are looking very, very closely for problems? And that's what these meetings are designed to do. So I think we are all in an OK boat right now. And certainly if you've received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, this is not at all a cause for alarm. And that's exactly what I would tell my family as well. All right. That said, we do know that there's a big segment of the population that is very hesitant for the very reasons we're talking about, because they don't know if it's safe. They worry about the efficacy of the vaccine. Is this only going to make that situation worse? Well, anytime we've seen questions about the safety of the vaccine, unfortunately, that has provided fodder to those who, you know, are kind of raising people's fears. Now, I think there's an important distinction between people who are concerned about the safety of the vaccine because they're saying, listen, uh, you know, it's relatively new. We don't have long term safety data, which are absolutely legitimate concerns. And those who are saying that, you know, the vaccines are, you know, microchipped and things like that, which, of course, there's absolutely no evidence for, um, you know, in that direction. So I think there's an important distinction there. Uh, that said, uh, I, I think, you know, anytime you see concerns about safety, it only provides ammunition to those who are worrying about it. But again, everyone is worried about safety. I think that's the key message. Every doctor in America, every epidemiologist in America is concerned about the safety of the vaccine. The problem is you've got to look at the safety of the vaccine versus the safety of getting COVID. And, you know, I just heard from a doctor colleague of mine the other day who was a very, very healthy young woman who ended up having, you know, severe heart problems from getting the actual infection. So the thing is, we've got to keep in mind the alternative to getting a vaccine is not that you go about your life and live happily ever after. The alternative to getting the vaccine with its possible tiny risk is getting COVID, which does have risks and which are not quite so tiny. All right, Dr. Cantor, thank you very much for your take. And for those of you who are just tuning in, both the FDA and CDC have both said that for the time being, they are asking all sites that administer the Johnson & Johnson vaccine to stop administration for now because of a situation that arose uh, among six people who had the vaccine. It resulted in a rare blood disease 
and blood clots. So we can tell you that the Gateway Mall, which administers the vaccine, Johnson & Johnson, here in town, and also a satellite center that was supposed to be set up today, a mobile vaccination site at the Lutheran Social Services, uh, was supposed to start administering at 9 o'clock this morning. That won't be happening. We'll certainly keep you posted on that ongoing situation and that breaking news throughout the course of the morning show right here on Channel 4 and NewsForJax.com. Jen?